one of them just popped down really quickly. We saw him lose his balance. And my name is David, and this series is how I'm conquering my fear of heights and bettering my mental health through doing hard things. On this episode, we have the pinnacle of testing one's fear of heights, Angel's Landing. With 5 million visitors per year, Zion National Park is one of the most popular national parks in America. Of these 5 million people, half a million will attempt to do Angel's Landing. This hike is a minimum of 4.5 miles with 1,600 feet of elevation gain, depending on how much you explore the surrounding area. Now my story of doing Angel's Landing actually starts five years ago. This is a point in my life when I just started a messy four-year divorce with my unfaithful wife. I needed a release. I was drawn to the mountains despite being scared of them. I set a goal for the scariest hike I could find, Angel's Landing. This story starts bright and early at 5.30 in the morning. After spending a week sleeping in my Honda CRV in 90 degree heat, I was finally granted a permit after seven attempts. I'd driven 2,500 kilometers to come do this hike, so I wasn't leaving until it was done. I opted for the first time block, and taking the 6 a.m. shuttle, the very first one of the day, would give me the best shots with the least amount of people. It's one thing to manage my fear doing this hike, it's another to shoot a film about it at the same time. The start of this hike is flat and simple and follows the Virgin River up to the base of the mountain. Can't lie, there's a bit of uh, jitters and anticipation right now. I've been waiting for this moment for six months. And as I said, slept in the sweltering heat in my vehicle for a week to get this permit. So, and on top of that, the thousand foot drops on both sides. Definitely gets your heart going now looking up at it. It's a big piece of rock. Now I was expecting a day full of fear and adventure, what I didn't expect is to almost see a man fall off and have part of the chains break on my descent, having the park service close the hike while I was on it. This was a day to remember. This wall up here, it doesn't even look like it's possible to go up. If you look very carefully, there's a switchback. So this path goes up to the top there, which goes to Scout's Outpost. Nobody needs a permit to get up to the Scout's Outpost. It's only from the base of the Scout's Outpost to the top of Angel's Landing do you need a permit. For this reason, you'll see a lot more people on this lower trail. Because a bunch of people just challenge themselves to come up, take a look from the bottom of the kind of Angel's Landing and not have to deal with all the permit stuff. And me personally, I didn't drive thousands of kilometers to go to Scout's Outpost. Now I'm not doing Angel's Landing today. It's just some avid hiker. I'm doing it for all the people out there that are afraid of heights. I'm terrified of heights. and I've been working at it for four years, uh, summiting dozens of mountains every year. I went through a really bad divorce that well, ended about a year ago, but it's been going on four years. And the first thing I started to do was climb mountains when I got out on my own. Four years ago, something like this would have been completely unattainable, even two years ago. So in a way, climbing this mountain, this physical mountain, is like a representative of climbing the internal mountain, proving to myself that I've evolved and changed over the last four years. The drop right here is like legit. We're not even on the top yet.
cut into the stone in 1924, the Walters Wiggles or the set of 21 switchbacks allows hikers to gain the ridge up to Scout's Lookout and Angel's Landing. This was the calm before the storm. Arriving at Scout Lookout, there was hardly anyone there. Most of the people ahead of me had already gone up Angel's Landing, with only two people to be seen. It's getting real. Game time. There you go. This here is the start of Angel's Landing. It's the spot where rangers typically check your permit before you're allowed to go up. Now if you do arrive before 8 a.m., there's no ranger there to check permits. And a bunch of people took advantage of this, but they do check permits on the way down and rangers are there by 8 a.m. So many of those people were in for a surprise when they came back down. The starting section here is no joke. While you do have stair steps and a chain to hold on to, there's five feet of dusty dry rock sloping to a cliff on your right side. As someone who's afraid of heights, this is the first spot that kind of spooked me. There's a section between chains, but there's nothing to hold on to, just more dusty dry rock. This section has a bit of a psychological element to it, as the rock is all sloped looking like it's going downwards, despite there being somewhat flattish steps to step on. After a little internal pep talk, it was time to go. My scrambling specialty comes from Vancouver Island where I live, where it's rich with moist wet roots and not dry rock. For this section, I just told myself to take a breath and take a step, and focus only on that. After 30 seconds, I was back to the next chain. This hike throws you into the deep end. This spot here is terrifying, yet still only two thirds the way up the wall. This first climb goes up to a little bit of a plateau before going back down. This section doesn't have any chains. It's flat and safe more or less, but still some spots here. They're not terribly comfortable. This isn't a mountain to be comfortable on. These spots are real nail biters for me. You know they're five feet wide. You can see how much sand and loose rock is here. There's big sections that don't have any bushes or trees, which only really provide false security. So there's another long section here, no chain, and then you can see the chain start again there. It's nice and flat. Two paths here, lower and upper. I'm more or less just talking to distract myself. So I got this. Being on the first bus granted me my wish of having Angel's Landing to myself. This was a blessing and a curse. There was hardly anyone around and it felt kind of eerie and made it a little extra scary like I was doing this by myself. Now I was, but it's reassuring to see other people. Getting up to this plateau and watching the trail drop below, I started to have a bit of a panic. My inner chump made his appearance, telling me I couldn't do it, I'm too scared, I should just get out of there and go back to town. After feeling like a poopy pants loser for a few seconds, I remembered I'm here to slay a dragon, not be eaten by one. Angel's Landing was formed through millions of years of the Virgin River carving through the stone, leaving this tiny ridge up to the summit. It's remarkable this ridge can be hiked, and there are zero ladders. So just at this landing spot here, just before the uh, peak. Taking a breath, this is challenging. Finishing off the first section of this hike to this flat plateau, I ran into these two, Jamie and Ethan, who kindly added me to their group. 
Doing something difficult like this is much easier when you're part of a group with supportive people. path started to get very narrow here and it was only going to get worse. The section immediately after this is the thinnest part on Angel's Landing at only 3 feet wide. This spot is pretty darn intense. There's chains here but oof. This is the kind of hike where you gotta pick your crux. Is it a steep drop down like this? Is it a sloped edge with no chain? Whoa, this is getting real. There's too many to pick from, but personally, for me, this was the worst part. Drops are insane. After the narrow crossing, we decided to take a minute and catch our breath as there was another section ahead of us. This section is unique in that it's a big slab that's angled. It's hard to see on camera, but most people tend to slide down this as it doesn't feel comfortable walking down it. Should have brought knee pads. <laughs> right. And here's a shot looking back on it. So this is the skinniest part of the entire trail right here. You can see straight down drops. We've only got about three, three feet wide, if that. But there's a chain. How old are you? 20. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't do that when I was 20. <laughs> I'm, I'm very scared of heights, but. You're doing really good. I hike a lot of mountains, so. I've, I've come a long way, it's just, at 20 years old, I would have just been, I don't even think I'd get up that, the switchbacks to get up to the scout outpost. I'm hoping we just get wedged in this all the way up. Yeah. I like chains, chains are good. Leaving the safety of the chains behind, the train turns into class 3, or ascending with the assisted balance of your hands. This section's a little bit bizarre because on the way up, you don't really feel how dangerous it really is. 
On the way down, this footpath is only a foot or a foot and a half wide, and there's a sheer cliff right on the right side, which you just don't really see. This is another one of those spots that's likely to be someone's crux. A large, steeply angled slab of rock with a 1300 foot drop behind really has you clanging onto that chain. The park service has cut in some conveniently placed wedges in the rock for extra grip. On average, every year Angel's Landing has one death, someone who unfortunately falls. We almost witnessed this in front of our eyes. You see, this section here is a combination of climbing up the chains and some large tree roots. Upon arriving to this spot, I realized we'd have to be waiting for a little while as these two people came down. I shut off my camera. Immediately after, four guys came down really fast, so we decided to wait. One by one, they were trying to act cool, jumping down the rocks. They'd leap one by one from the tree root down to this angled piece of rock. The first three guys, it went fine. Unfortunately, the fourth guy would land on that rock and start to lose his balance, falling to the left off the cliff. We all gasped, we all... Because we saw him lose his balance and lean towards the cliff, and there was no tree, there was no nothing there. He was about to go, he threw all his weight the other direction, caught his balance and kind of leaned over and caught the rock on the, on the mountainside, but... Uh, this place is no joke. Seeing that guy, he was within inches of like wavering and falling off. It was, it was terrifying. I didn't want to see that. Nobody wants to see that. We don't want that to happen to that guy. So definitely if you're going to come do this, take it serious. This short section is the steepest on Angel's Landing. A few class 4 moves are needed to get up here. As you can see, I'm using substantial force pulling on the chain versus grabbing the roots or the rock to get myself up. Let's not forget, 4 feet to my left is a 1300 foot vertical drop. The roots, while dry, are very slick and slippery from thousands of people stepping on them and I wouldn't recommend touching them. Say the trail's not that busy considering but the permit system yeah exactly harder than i anticipated even looking at the multiple youtube videos it's a more steep and uh just there's a few spots there where you think there'd be a chain and there's not so
While I wouldn't have believed it at the start, Angel's Landing does somewhat ease you into the hike. If it had started with this steep, angled, narrow section, it's quite likely the inner chump would have come out much earlier. After the narrow section, the slabs of rock, the big steep face, and the overhang shelf, once you get to this point, you become slightly desensitized to how steep and gnarly this trail is. You become fixated on the chains and putting one foot in front of the other. You can't help but feel the anticipation for the summit that looms near. So we're almost near the top. Jamie and Ethan, thank you so much for helping me out. So final push to the top here. It doesn't look like that much left. There's no chains on this part, so I'm gonna put you guys away and go back to the other camera. Yeah, that's right. There's a few sections on this hike, like this, where you're going to have to use your arms to pull yourself up, especially if you're short. It feels a little bit unnerving once you let go of the chains and you're climbing up something like this when there's a significant drop behind you. This is where my fear of heights comes in. It's climbing up things, not going down them. My fear is falling backwards down a mountain in a direction I can't see. Looking down a mountain gives me confidence, which is the exact opposite of about 90% of the population. It felt incredible summiting Angel's Landing. But achieving this goal isn't about the summit, it's about who I had to become to accomplish this. The whole purpose of a goal is to have a way that we can measure ourselves against to ensure that we are progressing, developing and becoming better. American writer William S. Burroughs said it best, when you stop growing, you start dying. I knew full well from experience with accomplishing this goal, I needed to have new ones on deck to give me a new North Star. But in this moment, I would bask in the glory that is the Summit of Angels Landing, one of the most gorgeous places I've ever been. I felt a sense of wonder and delight, that feeling of pure joy you feel as a child. This is pretty intense if you're afraid of heights. I will say the crux of this route is uh, still ahead of us. I'm not afraid of going down, but probably 80-90% of people are rather go up and down, so you can already see some knees trembling over there, people going down. Further down the shore Heartbeats Swaying with the tide
Definitely starting to get busy up here. So I'm heading back down now. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like to descend this, because I know that's probably what most of you are afraid of. It's getting so busy up there. It's just uh, definitely the, if you can get the early time slot and get a permit for the before 8 a.m. When I was up there, there was a few moments where there was no one. I couldn't get my tripod set up fast enough, but still got some shots there with minimal people up there. But it's a zoo up there now. This is arguably one of the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful place on earth I, I've ever been. This is up there with Big Interior Mountain. This is incredible. Still can't believe I'm up here. Just being up here signifies I've become a completely different person. Since my divorce, I was so scared of everything in life and scared of mountains. I couldn't get up hardly anything. This is just unreal. You can see a tour bus down there.
years I had. How's it going? Not too bad, how are you? I have a very healthy uh, fear of heights. Yeah, I mean, this uh, this doesn't help that, but... Got to slay the dragon. Exactly. This is the spot where those four guys jumped down and the fourth guy almost fell off right there on the right side of that rock. So going up right here that loop is doing. Chain chain. Yeah. This is the spot on the way up that I mentioned it's only a foot and a half wide that you couldn't really tell how steep it was on the left side here. The exposure here is actually quite extreme and there's no chains. So I'm down most of the hard stuff. Uh, the rest is pretty straightforward and easy. I'm really proud of myself for this one. Uh, looking back four years ago, there's no way I'd be able to do this. Not even, probably two years. Like I mentioned earlier, two years ago, I wouldn't be able to get up here. I might have spoken too soon as I still had the angled slabs, the super skinny bridge, and the sloped entrance piece. This part actually freaks me out. It's wider, but it's, there's no chain. I 
stand corrected, this is the skinniest spot. Massive exploder. So you can see there's a building there, that's the bathroom, and then the, uh, the ranger station is supposed to be there. Just off to the side of the bathroom, there's a rock bluff that casts a shadow just below, allowing some shade during the hot afternoon sun. All right, I got my sun hat out because it's really hot now. I got some electrolytes, got some food, and we're ready to keep going here. I'm gonna go up the uh, West Rim Trail, I think it's called. So if you can't get a permit to Angel's Landing, there's this other trail that goes up on the other side. So we'll go check it out, see what kind of great views we get up there. The views from Scout Outlook are incredible. Get views up and down the valley as well as a perfect shot of Angel's Landing. She thinks maybe it'll open tomorrow, but she didn't say it. Definitely worth it. Uh, I'm not going to head up any further. I'm pretty exhausted. I'm pretty hot and tired. Um, I found out today that as soon as, basically just after I got back, the Angel's Landing closed due to one of the chains. So a bunch of people with permits weren't able to go up. So it's 
pretty uh, crappy situation for them. Now, I didn't clue in exactly what happened while I was up there because someone said there was a problem with the chains, but in fact, it was a problem with one of the steel poles that came out of its footing. I noticed this on the way down, it was right near the ranger station. I grabbed one of the poles and pulled, and it started to pop up and out. I immediately pushed it back down and crouched down to the ground and grabbed really low on the pole, so my center of gravity would be pulling it down into the footing. Upon reaching the rangers, I had already noticed someone was there talking to them about the pole coming out. They ended up closing Angel's Landing five minutes after I got off of it, and it would remain closed for almost a week afterwards. It's kind of hard to turn around here. As there's more trail up there, but there's always more trail, and I think that goes for like nine miles, so at some point I gotta turn around. Pretty exhausted, I've been going now for six hours. Hopefully enjoy this episode of Angel's Landing. Showed a little bit more of the lower trail just because no one else does that. If you enjoyed this episode, I'm traveling across the United States right now filming mountains. This was at the top of my list. It uh, almost brought a tear to my eye. Just cr crossing this big bucket list hike off my, off my uh, list here. On the next episode, my long day isn't over as I head back to the Zion National Park Visitor Center where my car is, I dump my footage, quickly charge my batteries and head up to the Canyon Overlook hike for sunset. You're not going to want to miss this.